this visible external universe how much stupendous and imposing solid gross and physical it may appear to be is actually avidyamanah it is not in really reality existing it is your awareness and consciousness that brings its existence and display nothing else it is that alone that alone nothing else so mrsha is the right usage here tejo vari mrdam yatha vinimayo yatratru sargo mrsha dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dhimahi nirasta kuhakam the supreme reality is such that at every point of time it is not affected engulfed or overtaken by anything like maya anything like a jugglery <clears throat> by virtue of its own brilliance by virtue of its own splendor it always keeps away from evanescence 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 it gives you the notion of evanescence transitoriness it is its power to give you the notion of transitoriness but it does not get involved in transitoriness i don't know whether i will explain if i explain you will understand it properly what is that every day you wake up and when you wake up the world also rises you interact with the world for about 12 or even 13 14 hours at the end of the day you go to sleep when you go to sleep the entire wakefulness and the wakeful effects all are wiped off obliterated then you go to sleep for about 4 or 6 or 8 hours there after you come in between you have a dream where a parallel world is created so you are the waker you are the sleeper you are the dreamer are you following see you are the waker you are the sleeper you are the dreamer now the dream is gone when you wake up the wakefulness is gone when you sleep and the sleep is gone when you wake up so each state invalidates itself is overtaken by the other but the waker the dreamer and the sleeper he is never overtaken all the three states are regularly wiped out they are non existent but the substratum namely i woke up i slept i dreamt that i that i the substratum of all this that is always shining there is no point of time when that is put down or that becomes extinct all the other things are extinct nirasta kuhakam satyam param you should come along with me with wings if necessary fly along with me shrimad bhagavata is discussing that kind of a supreme truth param means supreme absolute absolute unconditioned truth satyam ever present present in the past present in the present and present in the future at no point of time it is extinct nor can it be brought to extinction that supreme truth which is transcendent what is meant by transcendent it is not within the range of sensory perception you cannot search and find it out anywhere in the external universe it is always inside your body so close your eyes close your eyes sit immerse in your own inner consciousness and depth let the mind vaporize like burned camphor what what when you burn camphor there will be no residue left in the same manner you have to think 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 ultimately the entire thought process should become extinct you have to reason reason and reason and let last the very reasoning process becomes extinct when everything gets wiped off the unwipable essence you will attain satyam param and in order to attain it what do you have to do dhimahi dhimahi carry it in your intelligence contemplate upon it assiduously using your intelligence using your intelligence you cannot do anything with god or reality except contemplate upon him 
if I give you a petal or a flower, I ask you, put it on God. You cannot put it on God. You may put it anywhere upon the surface of the earth. There is only one approach, that is contemplation. 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 Try to understand it. Listen to it. As Parichit was listening to, Sri Rama was listening to Vasishtha. Janaka Maharaja was listening to Ashtavakra, sage. As all of you are listening to a Bhumananda Swami, listen to it, listen to it, hear it fondly, fondly, lovingly, assiduously, persistently, consistently, devotedly, devoutly, dedicatedly. That is the only way. And then contemplate upon the concepts. Satyam Param Bhimahi. Where else this Dhimahi appears? In our Rigvedic Gayatri. Tat Savidur Varenyam Bhaggo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yo Na Prachodaya Tat Saviduhu Varenyam Bhaggo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yo Na Prachodaya We are contemplating upon that adorable brilliance of the Deva. <coughs> Contemplating upon. For what purpose? Dhyo yo naf prachodaya. So that it may inspire, inspire and enliven our intellects, our intellects. Generally people call it to be a prayer or a contemplation of Savida. Savida. Savida is generally understood to be Surya. I don't accept it at all. Not that I don't accept it, that is not the import. What can the external sun do in the matter of illumining your intelligence? Your intelligence is a conscious function and the sun is an inert object. Maximum the sun can emit light and heat. Both of them are in the fold of energy. Your intelligence is far superior to energy and matter. It is consciousness. That conscious pulsation called the intelligence, it cannot be motivated inspired or enlivened by sun's rays and sun's heat. So the word Savida means what? Savida tu Swatma Bhudastu Whatever is present in every Buddha, that is called Savida. He is the Samyak Veta also. That is the one which knows everything, which directs everything, which comprehends everything, which inspires, initiates and empowers everything. So the Gayatri is a contem contemplation upon the indwelling, supreme, transcendental brilliance. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. That Gayatri contemplation is given a more specific and a complete form here. Satyam Param Dhimahi. So the entire Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to make you comprehend, contemplate, actualize, experience and realize the supreme transcendental splendor reality which is in your own heart. I am reminded of Kano Upanishad. What does Kano Upanishad say? Kene shidam padati preshidam manah Kena prana pratama praidi yukta Kene shidam vajam imam badandi Chakshu Shrotram Kaudevo Yunati. The Kena Upanishad means by what Upanishad? Kena means by what? Kene Shitam Padati Preshitam Manaha. What is the force or what is the power and potential which activates my mind? By virtue of which my mind alights on the objects of the world. Kene shitam patati preshitam manaha Kena pranaha prathamaha praiti yuktaha Propelled or inspired or impelled by which the first prana began its first movement in me Kene shitam vajam imam vadanti Led by what? Guided or motivated by what? The first speech comes out of my mouth and tongue Chakshuhu, Shrotram, Kaudevo, Yunakti. 
what is that superhuman god which is behind the function of my ears as well as eyes my dear souls have you understood the difference here the upanishadic thinkers the vedic thinkers maybe for decades they started involving themselves in the external world of objects and perceptions they understood that all these are secondary everything is revealed by their senses and the senses are propelled by the mind the mind is itself led by the intelligence and the intelligence in turn has to be guided by something still superior and inner so the entire inquiry became subjective personal inner and experiential just see what bhagavatam says ಯತ್ವಾಚಾನಭ್ಯುದಿದಂ ಯೇನವಾಗಭ್ಯುದ್ಯದೆ ತದೇವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವಂ ವಿಧಿ ನೇದಂ ಯದಿದಮುಪಾಸದೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಯತ್ವಾಚಾನಭ್ಯುದಿದಂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅವರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ ಯೇನವಾಗಭ್ಯುದ್ಯದೆ ದ ಪವರ್ ಬೈ ವಿಚ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ ದೇ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ ಔಟ್ ತದೇವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವಂ ವಿಧಿ ನೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ನೇದಂ ಯದಿದಮುಪಾಸದೆ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಒನ್ ಐಡಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಯು ವಿಚ್ ಯು ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಇಯರ್ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಮ್ ಐ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಇಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಐಡಲ್ ನಾವು ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಸಿ an idol is there made by me it is placed in my friend looking at the place and the position and my eyes are looking at it my hands are trying to worship now are these things first or the power and the presence which activate my eyes to see activate my hands to work which is first the external seen idol or the seeing inside tadeva brahmatvam vidhi that is the supreme reality not the one you worship here en manasana manute yena hurmano madam es chakshushana pasyadi yena chakshum shi pasyadi et shotrena na shrinodi yena shotram idam shudam et pranena na pranidi yena prana praniyade tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam yadidam upasade see i am citing this can operation in order that my viewers and listeners will be able to understand how shrimad bhagavatam makes its beginning it directly links you to the supreme reality and the whole purpose of the composition is to enable the readers the thinkers the hearers to contemplate upon this inner supreme presence this is what he explains in the second verse also ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಕೈದಗೋತ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರ ಸದಾ ವೇದ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ತವ ಮತ್ರ ವಸ್ತು ಶಿವದ ತಾಪತ್ರೋನ್ಮೂಲನ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕೃತೆ ಕಂ ವಾ ಪದೈರೀಶ್ವರ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಹೃದ್ಯವರುಧ್ಯದೆ ಅತ್ರ ಕೃತಿ ಶುಶ್ರೂಷು ಭಿಸ್ತಕ್ಷಣ in the entire shrimad bhagavatam he says i am discussing dharma the power the process the pursuit and the source which will be able to intrinsically sustain your life in spite of any kind of an onslaught distress or suffering vedyam throughout the shrimad bhagavatam you have to know here the truth is to be known vastavam the truth that alone is discussed here atra vastu shivadam it is the one that is auspicious that alone will be able to shower auspiciousness in your life the entire world will give you what tapatrayam the adhyatmic suffering the adhi bhavadik suffering and the adhi daivik suffering if all the three sufferings have to be redressed or eliminated there is only one way by coming to know the supreme truth the reality which is auspicious and by virtue of its auspicious splendor it will be able to remove all the darkness of suffering tabatrayon moolanam shrimad bhagavate mahamuni hrde 
when the mahamuni creation called shrimad bhagavata is there parehi kim what is the use of the other scriptures and the compositions why sadyo hrdy avarudhyade ishwaraha the supreme lord the supreme reality is installed in your heart are you with me when i say this ishwaraha sadyo hrdy avarudhyade tra krihi by those fortunate people blessed people good benign people who have faith people who have adherence to the scriptures whose life is fortunate no hindrances no obstructions they are not suffering from skepticism nothing like that they have an innocent heart innocent mind innocent intelligence such people sadyo hrdy avarudhyade atra kridhi shushrushu bistakshanat simply lend your ears say shrimad bhagavatam all that you have to do is lend your ears i will invade your heart invade your heart simply go on listening 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 to what shrimad bhagavatam says sadyo hrdy avarudhyade trakadibhi shushrushu bistakshanad so my dear souls what i have to tell you on behalf of shrimad bhagavatam is the whole shrimad bhagavatam is actually a voyage a voyage through knowledge it traverses your mind traverses your intelligence traverses through the ego ultimately it lands you on the inner supreme splendor it will enrapture you with the majesty and magnificence of your own soul that is the supreme reality the soul is inner not outer the entire visible world is an illusion it is elusive the illusion making substratum alone is the truth here and that truth is not material it is not energial it is the consciousness the pure consciousness that permeates your body activates your organs initiates every little bit of activity and pulsation and interaction in your life turn inward contemplate upon the supreme truth understand that it is absolute and transcendent above the range of the senses have no truck with this world no truck with this world you are an illusion illusion i am the seer you are the see it is the seeing consciousness that cooks up the sight the world becomes colored only because of my senses in the absence of the senses there will be nothing called world to be perceived or interacted with our senses themselves are not created by the world it is cast designed made and pres- preserved by the inner consciousness look there the transcendental truth is there within your heart closer to you than everything else closer than your family members closer than your married partner closer than your children closer than even the deity you worship hmm hmm hanuman there was a rama there see carry the heart and the chest my dear souls don't be beggars don't be poor you may be economically poor but inwardly you cannot be you should be an embodiment of abundance affluence opulence and an undecaying inexhaustible spiritual inner splendor that is what you should okay let me stop huh? are you sure a sanyasi doesn't need to be clapped better follow what he says <clears throat> ശാന്തസ്വഭാവമജരാത്മകമേഘസത്യം 
సన్నిపదం నిరుపమం కలనాహీనం అందర్బహిశ్చవకుదా వ్యవహార్యమానం తద్దైవమేవ మమ సర్వం అహం తదేవా ప్రబుద్ధం విముక్తం వికారాదిహీనం ప్రసన్నం సదా నిత్యబోధస్వరూపం పరం నిశ్చలం నిర్గుణం సర్వరూపం భజేహం సదానుస్మరామి ప్రణవీ హరి హరి ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ టుగెదర్ See, there is a book called Brahma Vidya Abhyasa, The Key to the Inner Self. There you will find the whole theory of the spiritual experiential Vedanta is mentioned in the first half. And in the second half, it is practice and pursuit leading to Nirvigalpa Samadhi and beyond, full state of wisdom. It is there. I would like you to read it very well, not once, more number of times. Okay? Okay. Oh.